uh, as an artist surviving in New York, I was uh, running several day jobs and really the night time was the time to compose and I was finding it just very, very difficult and couldn't imagine life as a composer and was really starting to think of some, some plan Bs. I thought that investment banking might be a more appropriate uh, financial resource for me. Um, and I actually secured an interview in Wall Street downtown. I went to the interview and they told me to stick with music. So that was the end of that uh, line of inquiry. <laughs> Life as a composer can be very challenging and these are moments that help me move forward. In 2005, I was a fellow at the Bang Akan Summer Institute, which was a wonderful experience, and it happened uh, just after I'd graduated from Manhattan School of Music, so it was a great transition um, into meeting a new community of composers and musicians. And that year, Steve Reich was the guest faculty, so he came and met with us. Um, there were, I think, six or so of us composers, and he shared his work, and he responded to some work, and um, he very kindly invited us to share any work with him. Um, but I was very shy at the time and didn't really have the confidence to do that. But probably about six months later, I was at a Bang on a Can um, event at BAM in Brooklyn, and he was at the after party. So I built up the courage to go and introduce myself, and I explained that I, I had met him, that I would have loved to have shown him a piece, but I was just a little shy, and he very kindly offered for me to send a piece to him. Um, so I sent a piece uh, called Rewind, which is my first substantial orchestral work. Um, and to my absolute surprise, a couple of months later, I got a, an email in my inbox and the title was, You Are a Good Composer, and it was from Steve Reich. He had really thoroughly gone through the piece and gave me a lot of feedback from it. Something I had asked him is the piece has a lot of energy, rewind, and but it has these interruptions, and I felt that the interruptions became too stable, and I wanted to find ways to make them sort of a bit more fiery and off-kilter. So he gave me some really good ideas for that and um, explained like how to use ba the bass in sort of very interesting ways. So that's something that I've continued to take with me. So to suddenly get this email, um, was a huge uh, boost of support. Uh, actually, the piece I was writing at the time that I received this email was a piece called Steelworks, and it's actually dedicated to Steve Reich, and I think it's also very inspired by a lot of his uh, vocal processing that he uses in, in his music, so it came at a very important time for me. In 2014, I was living in Chicago, and I learned that Carnegie Hall was presenting an evening of music by Arvo Pett, including a piece called Fratres, which is the first piece I heard of his, actually, back when I was living in Edinburgh. I heard it on the radio, and it immediately captivated my ears, and it's a piece I continue to love to listen to. And so I, I came to New York for this concert, and I was very fortunate to be able to meet him backstage after, and uh, he's such a gentle, uh, person that and to meet him in, in person having heard all his music was was quite profound actually in some ways and um, I brought with me a piece called Within Her Arms and uh, a recording of it and, and I shared it with him and uh, I was just happy to, I didn't know if he would listen to it but I just I wanted to make some gesture and uh, we had a conversation and it was just wonderful uh, to meet him Sh uh, shortly after maybe a couple of months I actually got an email from him and uh, he said that he'd enjoyed listening to this music and shared very encouraging w words for my, for my music. So uh, again, uh, this came at a point where I was struggling with life as a composer, so it was another sort of affirmation to stick with it. Um, and at the time, I was writing a violin concerto, uh, which I was struggling with uh, quite a bit. So in response to his email, I wrote to him and asked if he had any suggestions for how to deal with writer's block. And he wrote me the most beautifully poetic letter I think I've ever received. A few things I, I think really stuck with me. Um, one is that he said that a writer's block is almost like an alarm to the system, sort of an order to, to, uh, to stop, and that sometimes it's good to actually take a break to go away from it. Um, but he also said that, um, you know, we should uh, walk and walk again to, to again and again to learn to walk like a, like a child step by step, to have that sort of curiosity with music. Um, and the third thing that he said is that, um, you know, the, the biggest secret to music is in the, the smallest things, like really in the smallest things between the second and third note, that if something's not functioning there, that the whole piece will fall apart as it is in life. And I thought that's so true. It can be easy to try and steamroll through material, but sometimes really taking the care to really find those, that initial idea 
um, that's going to become your, the kernel of an idea for the, from which you're going to develop the whole piece is so important. So that's something that I've also taken from that advice is to take the time that it needs to get that um, that idea. And I think actually within Harams is a, a really a piece for string orchestra is a good example of that. It opens with just a very simple A G F sharp G motif, but from that little tiny cell un unlocks like 12 to 15 minutes of music. Receiving the support really sort of encouraged me to keep going with it and um, to know that there's people uh, that are supporting my work and um, to stick with it. <laughs>